I want, um, through this inquiry, to give those people who are managing the uplands and, and living in those communities um, a sense that something is happening, um, that they're being affirmed about what they're doing, but more than that, um, that there is some kind of security in the next decade or so. I'm hoping to report to the Prime Minister in autumn with some real solid solutions and a way forward. I think it's important for all of us as a public, uh, the general public, to realise that making sure that the uplands are, are managed, because that's what it's about, managed, is not only important for the hill farmers, but it's, in, it, but it's also important for the general public. As I've travelled uh, around the country, especially up to Cambria and, and uh, Northumberland and down to uh, Devon, I've actually found that uh, the uh, farmers in the upland communities are facing uh, enormous pressures upon them. The main challenge is trying to keep the upland farmers there. Um, and that arises because uh, not so many people want to uh, live in sparse areas of the countryside, for example, and earn uh, quite a pittance. I mean, the average wage of a hill farmer is around £7,000 a year. Um, so that if you put it that in the context, it means to say that I've come across people who are uh, uh, only, only earning about £4,000 from hill farming. OK, they have some subsidies uh, as well, uh, but then they have to diversify if they can diversify. And I think that I've come to the conclusion that um, this is a real problem that we're storing up for ourselves in the future. It raises enormous questions of why we want hill farmers uh, on the uplands in any case. Uh, and I would actually say because the, uh, keeping the livestock uh, up there is very, very important uh, for a whole lot of different reasons. Uh, but there's a huge problem out there and that is why really I've set up the inquiry. I would encourage diversity where diversity can actually take place. It can't always take place in very sparse communities. But where, for example, I've come across hill farmers um, who, uh, who diversify in terms of um, their spouse, usually, uh, in making honey, for example, um, or making candles. Um, and when I've asked them, you know, how much money do you actually make from making honey and making candles, they say about £12,000 a year. So you can see that that um, will complement, more than complement, um, the salary coming in from hill farming and make it and make it possible for people to stay there. Now, where diversification can take place, I would want to particularly encourage it. Uh, but it's in those particular areas where diversification is far more difficult to manage uh, that we have a real problem. We've been talking about the upland sector mm -hmm. in this region, which is under tremendous pressure, and I think you could see real accelerated change there where we need to see some real decisions in terms of policies about what we want to see the uplands doing mm -hmm. in the future, and not least in terms of those communities uh, farming, as well as all the linked um, other jobs and, and rural tourism, etc, etc. We need to see some joined up policy about food, about farming, about the environment. Whilst painting a very dim view at the moment, it, it is a very challenging time for farming across the board in this region. Uh, and yet long term, in terms of the demands, in terms of food and energy security and all the other benefits that I talked about earlier, you know, uh, it's going to be critical to have farming there in the future. And I think we have to recognise the difficulties we have in the short term to ensure that we have sustainable agriculture and food production going forward. What I'm trying to achieve is to get to the bottom um, of what is actually happening in the uplands. Agriculture is changing um, and it's changing at a pace. Um, and not only that, but communities are changing and rural communities are changing too. Uh, and being challenged in terms of how they're going to be sustained in the future. And I'm trying to uh, identify what are the drivers of change affecting the hill farmers and also the knock-on effect of that to the social and the community aspects of, uh, of, of rural life and where can we uh, come up with some really creative ideas. We need to do some new economic modelling in terms of trying to work out what the rural economy is going to be like in the future in these particular areas. And I think that building upon international experience is going to be the heart of that. Because here in England, we're not the only people who are facing these particular issues. So we need to learn from the best practice that is going on in some of the other countries on the continent of Europe.
Look at this. It's going to be a very uh, people-orientated inquiry, and that means to say that as I go, go around the upland areas, and there are about half a dozen of them in, in, in England, um, that they're going to be very different because, you know, uh, hill farming up in Cumbria is very different from the uplands area in, in the southwest, for example. Um, and I think it's actually very, very important that we get out there, we talk to people, we listen, um, and we don't just go to one particular area and say, right, we've covered it for the whole of the country. No, there are particular areas and they're all very different, different people, different situations. I've made contact with the uh, local farmers association. We need to engage the experts because some experts have been working academically in this field for a long time. Uh, we need to engage those who are professional in, in all this. So we need to use the expertise there which is available. We also need to set up regional hearings so that people can gather, they can bring their evidence which is wide ranging in many ways and that we can gather that evidence which is about human stories in many ways, anecdotal stories if you like. And the NAC is going to be, to be able to, um, to turn their evidence into some hard evidence based work for government. I think one of the things we fail to realise in, in our countryside is that things are very diverse and very different from the north to the south, the east to the west. And somehow we, we have to pick up, yes, the common themes and strands, but where are the differences and why are the differences there? So it's going to be local, it's going to be people-orientated, people-focused. It's important for us to um, listen to as many people and to involve as many people as possible because we haven't got all the answers um, and we want this to be a partnership concern. Um, so, for example, our particular partners like Natural England um, and the Environment Agency and the Forestry Commission, these are people uh, who we need to consult and work alongside. We need to talk to national government, to um, the, the regional development agencies, um, and we, listen, we, we need to listen to the voluntary and community sector who are doing an amazing job um, in the communities out there in those upland areas. So not only the, um, the normal suspects, if you like, uh, but anybody who will help us build up a picture of what is really happening out there in the uplands and help us to come up with some creative ideas. This is a very, very important piece of work that we can do not just for the farmers in the uplands but also for the general public and also for national government to take very seriously um, this particular area of, of farming. And I always remember David Miliband asking me the question, what are the uplands for? Now it's a very open-ended question uh, he, he, he actually raised with me. But I, my hope is that through this inquiry we shall come up with some um, positive reasons behind what we think the uplands are for and the farmers and the communities that they embrace.